In this video, we're covering a pretty confusing topic for beginners and non-colorists. Color space versus color gamut, and I'm breaking it down into five questions. Define color space and color gamut. What's the difference? Why is it important to understand how to properly set up your color space and color gamut? What to look for in a monitor when using a specific color space? So we recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing and working with 8-bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades and some of my personal LUTs. Link is in the description. And guys, if you're enjoying the content, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when I put out brand new content. Let's roll the intro. So the color space is a range of colors inside a color spectrum that is visible to a human eye. Let's look at the chart. So here are a few examples of color spaces. Da Vinci white gamut, you're probably familiar with it. RE white gamut, ASUS, P3, Rec 2020, Rec 709. So look at the amount of information each color space covers inside the color spectrum. Colors that we can see with the naked eye. Some of the color spaces are actually going past that, which is perfect for archival purposes. Once we have more capable displays, we can take full advantage of this. Now let's move on to color gamut. And color gamut is a range of colors within the color space that can be reproduced on an output device. So here are a few examples of color gamuts. And literally, if I were to go back to color space, just look at how much wider each triangle was compared to our color gamuts. And that's the whole point, right? Color gamuts are basically range of colors within a color space. And you guys are probably familiar with these as well. The current HDR standard is Rec 2020. Adobe RGB is used in the photography world. NTSC is the old SDR standard. DCI P3 is used in the theaters worldwide. And then we got the internet standard, which is sRGB. Now to further explain the difference between color space and color gamut would be this. Let's just say I'm in Resolve and right here, input transform, I'm working in ASUS. If I were to change my output transform from Rec. 709 to let's say something like HDR, which would be P3 D65 SD 2084, as soon as I do that, my image looks like this. And that's because we're choked on the display level. My display can only output Rec. 709 so it is sort of like blind to what this color space or color gamut is that I'm trying to tell it that, hey, transform everything into this color gamut. And my display is just kind of pooping right now. It's just like, hey, I don't know what you're asking me. I, I don't speak that language. So now if I go back to Rec. 709, it understands that. And it is set to Rec. 709 because that's what it's capable of. So it's giving me a proper conversion. OK, so that is the difference. My color space inside Resolve could be as wide as possible, but I am limited to what my display can output. So my color gamut then is choked at Rec. 709. But later in this video, I will show you how we can output HDR if our monitor is capable of it. So this is a practical example for you to understand why it's important to know the difference between color space and color gamut. Let's say that I'm grading on this screen. This is the Apple Display XDR. OK, so Pro Display XDR. And it's by default set to P3 color space at 1600 nits. So this is what everything looks like on this screen. But inside Resolve, my color space and color gamut is set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, meaning when I export this, the final output is going to look like this. It doesn't matter the screen. It could be your grandma's old TV, your girlfriend's iPad or your laptop. It's going to look similar to that. There might be some color shift that happens usually from screen to screen, but overall image is going to look very close to this compared to this. 
And now I'm going to show you how to correct that. Now, in order to fix it, all we had to do is to go under presets instead of P3 color gamut, I changed it to Rec. 709 HDTV video and uh, that did the trick. So now if I make this full screen and you can look at the two screens, they look very, very close and that's how it's supposed to be. OK, now let's just make it more exciting and take it up a notch. Let's just say the client says, hey, can you also deliver another trim in HDR? And now I'm going to go ahead and select the right parameters for HDR output. So it's going to be P3 D65 SD 2084 thousand nits. It's a mouthful, but let's go ahead and select that. As soon as we do that, this is what happened on our screen. So usually we know that HDR Dolby Vision is supposed to look very lifelike. It should pop. It shouldn't look like this. So what's going on? What's happening is let's go back. Our monitors, our screen, our displays are still set to outputting Rec. 709 meaning we have to manually tell our screens that are capable of displaying HDR, which in this case is the Sony BVM HX310. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I've already created a preset, but I'll show you what it's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and click this one button. And boom, check this out. So the HDR kicked in. You can hear the fans. So now it's in its like super mode. And if I were to hit the display, we can look at it right now what is going on color space is DCI P3 and then EOTF is set to 2084 HDR, which is thousand nits. Okay. And this is the mode that I had to go in to get the actual display going compared to like what was happening on the SDR screen. And this is why guys, it's really important to understand these things. And now the next step is what to look for in a monitor when you're working in a specific color space or color gamut. All right, so I picked out three different monitors. These are at three different tiers, okay? So if you're getting serious about color grading, I will highly recommend a monitor like this, ISO CG2700. It's a new release from ISO. And the stuff that I'm worried about is brightness. So the maximum brightness is 400 nits, which means that it is more than capable for giving you a true Rec. 709 brightness, which is usually 100 nits. Contrast is 1600 to 1, which is pretty good for an IPS type LCD. And it's a 10 bit monitor, which is excellent for color grading. And uh, it basically covers 100% Rec. 709. That's why they didn't even give it here because you're covered and 99% Adobe RGB. So if you're working with photos, you're pretty set. DCI-P3, it is pretty capable at 98%. And that's what you need to see. OK, you need to see color gamut. You need to see bit depth. You need to see brightness and uh, contrast ratio is a pretty good one too. higher the better. Now, the second example is going to be a professional monitor uh, when it comes to SDR grading, which is DM241. Uh, that's the model number from Flanders Scientific. And it's also a 10 bit panel, 1100 to one contrast ratio. So it's a little less than the ISO. But based on my experience, I can tell you with the backlight technology that they use, this contrast is going to be feeling right at the same level, if not better compared to ISO. Uh, this one goes higher nits compared to ISO to 450, but it's still not HDR. And then they tell you what it covers. So it covers 100% of Rec. 709. It does cover DCI P3. And then they have their own proprietary native gamut, which is pretty wide for an SDR monitor. And then finally, we're going to look at the big boy, which is BVM HX310. This is the de facto when it comes to color grading, Marvel movies and pretty much anything on the top end. Company three is using BVM HX310. It basically doesn't get any better than this as of now. Uh, it has 1000 nits sustained um, 1 million to one contrast ratio. Guys, look at this. So we have 1100 to one. 1 million to one. And you have to see it in person to know what that really means. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's flawless. And now that you have this information, you can decide what it is that you usually work with. If you're working with SDR content, you might be more than okay with just going with ISO CG because the price is right. 
if you want to do more color accurate work and just want to make sure that you know you're 100 percent on the money then go with flanders and uh if money is no object you want to go all the way and you're working with a lot of hdr content and sdr content then there is nothing better than the bvm hx310 so hopefully this cleared up any confusion that you may be having around this subject if you have any other questions when it comes to color grading, drop them in the comment section below. That helps me plan out future content. And in the meantime, if you want to shorten your learning curve, then check out the free training. It also comes with LUTs, power grades, and practice footage, so it's well worth your time. Link is in the description. And guys, if you enjoyed this video, then do me a favor, smash the like button so we can reach more awesome people such as yourself. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when I put out brand new content. And on that note, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed. I will see you guys in the next video.